Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're going to be continuing on with AP Physics 1 uh, for your response questions. We're going to be looking at some rotation uh, problems. So as usual, I suggest you pause the video and try to do the problem on your own, and then come back after you've tried the problem. So a solid cylinder with mass m, radius r, and rotational inertia 1 half m r squared rolls without slipping down the incline plane as shown above. The cylinder starts from rest at a height h. The incline plane makes an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. Express all your solutions in terms of these variables. Determine the translational speed of the cylinder when it reaches the bottom of the inclined plane. Okay, you can do this through an energy. You know, we've done these before in some of the previous ones with either energy or doing a free body diagram and doing the um, kinematic equations. But uh, energy is a lot easier. So the initial energy here is just mgh, right? That's the initial energy. And it has to, by the time it gets to the bottom down here, all that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. What kind of kinetic energy? One half mv squared plus one half i omega squared because it's rotating. It's rotating and it's moving. So there's energy due to just it rotating and there's energy due to things moving. And this thing, when it's rolling, it's doing both. It's both rotating and it's moving. Okay. Um, but I know that um, omega is the same as, um, well, I know i is 1 half mr squared, first of all. And I know omega is v over r quantity squared. Okay. So, do, 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 do. yeah. Um, So um, I can, uh, the r squareds cancel here. And, oh, is it 1 half? Yeah, it's 1 half. So I get 1 half plus 1 half. That's um, one, uh, 3 fourths mv squared is equal to mgh. The m's cancel. And I can solve for v. v is equal to the square root of 4 thirds gh. B. On the figure below, draw and label the forces acting on the cylinder as it rolls down the inclined plane. Your arrows should begin at the point of application of each force. So gravity is always straight down. Um, we have the normal force perpendicular to the plane. And then friction. Oh, the normal force uh, extends here, and then the frictional force is like this. Okay? And this is theta. Show that the acceleration of the center mass in the cylinder while it's rolling down the incline plane is two-thirds g sine theta. Okay, we've done a lot of these problems in previous practice, but let's set it up again. Um, I want to consider um, in the horizontal direction the net force equation. So if I say positive is going down the ramp, then my net force in the x direction is fg uh, sine theta minus force of friction, right? This is force of friction, I forgot to write. And that has to equal ma. Okay, I don't know force of friction, I don't know acceleration, so it's two unknowns. Um, the net torque is only due to the force of friction and it's causing it to rotate this way, right? And its torque would be the force of friction times r. Now, why is that the case? The force of friction is already perpendicular to the r vector, the r vector being from the center of the point of rotation to the point of where the force is acting. So that's the r vector. They're already perpendicular, so I just multiplied them. That equals i alpha, which is 1 half m r squared, just replacing i. And then instead of alpha, I'm going to replace it with a over r, right? Because alpha r is equal to a. So a over r is alpha. Okay, these r's cancel. So I have force of friction times r is equal to 1 half m a r. The r's cancel. So force of friction is 1 half m a. Now I can, what do I, um, Oh, I, I want to find what the acceleration is. So I'm going to replace the force of friction with 1 half ma. So I'm going to have fg, which is um, mg sine theta minus 1 half ma is equal to ma. I add that uh, the m's cancel if I sort of cancel everything out. 
So I have g sine theta. 1 half a plus a is 3 halves a. So a is equal to 2 thirds g sine theta. OK, and that's what they wanted us to show. Uh, C, uh, oh no, that was that was C. Uh, do, 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 do. No, that was B. Deter uh, this was C. So this is D. Well, we'll put D, yeah, we'll put D right here. Determine the minimum coefficient of friction between the cylinder and the incline plane that is required for the cylinder to roll without slipping. Well, basically, I need at least the force of friction to equal mu times the normal force. Okay. From the y direction, the normal force is because it's not accelerating in the y direction, right? It's going down the ramp. It's not going perpendicular to the ramp, no acceleration. The normal force has to equal Fg cosine theta. OK? So that's that has to equal the force of friction. And what we found previously on the force of friction is that it's equal to 1 half ma. So this has to equal 1 half m times 2 thirds g sine theta. OK, so the m's will cancel. And so the g's will also cancel. So mu has to, and divide by cosine theta, has to equal that cancel. So I get 1 third sine theta over cosine theta, or it's 1 third tangent of theta. E. The coefficient of friction mu is now made less than the value in determinant part d so that the cylinder both rotates and slips. Indicate whether the translational speed of the cylinder at the bottom of the inclined plane is greater than, less than, or equal to the translational speed calculated in part a. So when we were rolling without sleep, slipping, we were basically saying that the omega has to be the same. Uh, at, you know, that basically without slipping, v, uh, omega r equals v. Right, but in this case, um, omega is going to be smaller. So if there's less energy, because it's going to be rotating, but it's also going to be sliding a little bit. That's what we mean by slipping. It's going to be like skidding, or like, like the, the 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 speed here at the end doesn't match that. So if omega goes down, then v will go up because this equality still has to be whole for conservation of energy. So v increases because omega decreases. See, the, the basically, um, the wheel is not spinning fast enough to keep up with its velocity. So that's part one. Indicate whether the total kinetic energy of the cylinder at the bottom of the incline plane is greater than, less than, or equal to total kinetic energy for the previous case of rolling without slipping. Total kinetic energy of the cylinder at the bottom You know, there's a little bit of energy loss due to friction. That's something to keep in mind. Um, so I wonder if my velocity was correct. My part A was probably not actually correct. I want to double check this part. I'm going to go back to that. But what I'm going to say is because um, FF is smaller, um, less energy was lost because the friction is actually causing um, some energy lost. There, there's a loss of energy and friction. So this conservation of energy idea is actually probably not correct. I'm going to write what I put, got up here. I didn't think about that. When I did the conservation of energy, I, I forgot that there is some friction. And that friction is constant the whole way. And that's causing a loss in energy. So this energy equality is probably not correct. So um, let's erase all this and see what I get for V. Well, if this were the acceleration, we'll work backwards. If this were the acceleration, then um, my V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2A delta X. Okay, my initial velocity, because I, I uh, do, 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 cylinder starts from rest, 0 plus 2 times 2 thirds g sine theta times delta x. Well, how far is it rolling? Um, it's rolling, let's see, 
um, this length here L, uh, I know tangent of theta is equal to, oh no, not that's sine of, sine of theta is equal to H over L, opposite over hypotenuse. So L is equal to H over sine theta. So this would be H divided by sine theta. That cancels. So I get um, 4 thirds GH. And so V is equal to the square root of 4 thirds GH. Okay, never mind. Huh. Why does friction not cause any energy loss? I'm a little confused by that. Um. Because there would be some friction. Oh, but I guess, you know, I guess that friction isn't... I guess you're a little bit crazy. Fr friction's not do actually doing any work, though. Even though a force of friction is being applied, uh, it's not. It, it's it's weird when it's turning like this. The force of friction, I guess, is not doing any work. Okay, so actually, I would say probably. Uh, and I would change my answer in this one. Um, it is equal to energy. Uh, no net energy lost in either case. <laughs> yeah. So oh, that was a good exercise to do, just to make sure we got the same answer. So conservation of energy was the correct approach. I just, for some reason, I, uh, I was doubting myself that because there's this force of friction applying that it was doing work. But... Yeah, hmm. That is uh, a little strange. I'm gonna look at the answers for this one. Um, I do have the answers. I just don't typically look at them because I feel pretty good about that. People, some people are saying the answer is saying that the total energy is less. I'm a little not sure about that one. I'd be interested if I knew the exact solutions of this one. But from our equations, we said energy was equal, right? That's how we did part A. So the fact that it's slipping now. Oh, oh, I, I see what's happening. Because it's doing a little bit of sliding, friction is doing work. So it's actually going to be slower. Um, because while it's slipping, it's sliding a little bit. And that sliding part is, it, friction is doing work in that case. Um, so less than. Less. Okay. All right. Hope you found that helpful. Um, I'll see you on the next uh, video. Yeah, see you. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.